Joe Kowalski with RetainingWallExpert.com. Today we are in Colerain, Ohio at the Stone Creek Shopping Center and we're taking a look at one of the walls that we designed. There are a number of walls here comprising about 32,000 square feet of retaining wall. What we're going to talk about today specifically is the large drainage pipe that comes through the center and the bottom of this retaining wall. The wall designer needs to concern himself with two important things with respect to this box culvert and this creek. The first is called rapid drawdown, and the second is loss of soil material adjacent to the box culvert. Rapid drawdown is a condition where this box culvert is filled with water from the creek. That water will permeate back into the retaining wall structure. When the creek water goes down, there is still water pressure inside the wall. That water needs to be collected and removed as rapidly as possible. The best way to do that is to use an all gravel or other free draining granular material in the lower region of the wall below some certain elevation. Typically that's the 100 year flood. Additionally, there needs to be a significant number of six or eight inch out drainage pipe outlets from behind the wall. Remember, those drainage pipe outlets need to be protected with a sock or other filtering device so you don't lose the retaining wall backfill out of those pipes. The second thing we're going to take a look at is ways to prevent loss of soil where the retaining wall meets the edge of the box culvert. What we're going to because we are in an environment where there will be a lot of water and because the material making up the reinforced zone of the retaining wall typically consists of finer particles such as silt and sand, we need to protect against loss of those particles along this interface where these blocks meet this headwall structure. The best way to do that is by putting a relatively thick non-woven geotextile, it's a filter fabric, along the back side of the block and running a couple feet along the inside of this structure. So if you can imagine behind this block there's a piece of fabric running down the structure and it turns and goes behind the block. Behind that filter fabric then you have drainage gravel, then you have your sand for the reinforced zone. That filter fabric prevents loss of soil through these very small tiny gaps and cracks. Another thing that has to be performed when constructing retaining walls around head walls is to make sure that all gaps are filled in with non-shrink grout or concrete or a, a good strong mortar similar to this patch you'll see up here. This small area was filled in with some concrete because there was no way to shape and cut the block exactly to fit in there. Today we took a look at a retaining wall that had a relatively large box culvert coming through the retaining wall. Some important things we talked about are making sure that the box culvert is designed to handle the load of the retaining wall and making sure that as the designer you consider rapid drawdown and that you take preventive measures to make sure that you don't lose material where the retaining wall meets the box culvert. I'm Joe Kowalski with RetainingWallExpert.com, right here, right now.